if you're going to learn the things that Paul taught, if you're going to receive the things that Paul taught, if you're going to going to be able to see in him, you and I are going to have to have that information communicated to us. And we're going to have to have it communicated to us in an authoritative, available way. And that's what your Bible is. Our conference this past summer, just a month ago, was um, in, in, uh, focused on uh, the 400th anniversary of the publishing of the King James Bible. And we call it 400 years of eternal power because that's exactly what God's Word is. It's everlasting power, and it's been available for you and me in our language for all these, the, the, these centuries, and, and it's something to appreciate and to value. And I wanted to spend just a little bit of time this morning, kind of, I'm not going to review the Bible conference. I, if you weren't there, uh, I would recommend to you to get the DVDs or CDs and listen to the, to the outstanding messages that, that the, the brethren brought all week long. Uh, on, on the various aspects of, of putting the Bible, uh, not, just, not just writing it, producing it, and preserving it through history, but also putting it into our language. And the intricacies and the favor with which it's been done for you and me, there is a reason why the authorized version has been the world's Bible for the last 400 years. There's, a, there's some reasons for this, some technical reasons, there's some practical reasons, and you need, to, you need to have an appreciation of that. We live in an era when when our, our culture has been unhooked from God's Word. I've said enough to you in recent days about that, not to have to repeat myself this morning, but ju just the whole cultural uh, 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 mule in which we live is designed to cut you off from the heritage of God's Word. Uh, I'll repeat myself a little bit, but I, I mentioned to you again the fact that just uh, six months or so ago I talked to an attorney here in Chicago, a 30-year-old man who... Is, it was educated here in Chicago in, in, in a very prestigious law school, got a, got a good job at a big law firm down in the loop. He did not know what the, 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 the Good Samaritan Law, he didn't know where that title came from. And when, when, when I told him, he got angry <clears throat> and said, you can't do that, separation of church and state. Now, you and I think about that, and we say, you know, <laughs> but for him, understand, raised, the, raised in government schools for the last, you know, he's 30 years old, so he's been going to the government schools the last 20 years, where you have to, there, there, is, there is among the government, people that run the government schools, almost a panic hallucination uh, and frantic, manic op oppression to get anything about the Bible out. Okay? They're afraid of it. And, you know, you, if, you, if you don't understand that, listen to something like Jay Sekulow Live on the, on the radio every day, and you hear constant things about where they're constantly pushing back against that kind of thing in our culture. And uh, thank God for people that are out there doing that. But the mindset is that we can't do that because we have this idea. Now, that comes from, that's not just a political thing. That comes from a, a very cult, a, a cultural shift. If you talk to people, I, it rained this morning. We had that big storm, you know, right time Sunday school start, and everybody's, you know, we had a rain delay this morning. People in the video wonder where we were. That's where it was. And I said to somebody, I said, boy, you know, pair them up, Noah, one more time. There's a real frog strangler coming. <laughs> and people look at me sometimes and say, where do you get those expressions from? Well, you know, I, it's just the way I've always heard things said. But you know, now a frog strangle, you could figure that one out pretty easy, right? <laughs> you got to talk to the front row down here, Benny. They're, they're having trouble. Uh, well, but pair them up, Noah, one more time. You see, if you don't know something about the Bible, now if you, really, if you were really culturally astute and you knew Ray Stevens, you'd know who I was quoting. But... Uh, <laughs> I, I know that's a hopeless cause. I've already discovered that. It, but references to David and Goliath, things like that, that are just so much a part of the way our culture expresses itself and, and identifies its values comes right out of God's Word. And that kind of thing has been literally eliminated from, from younger people's culture. If you're, a part of the, if you're educated in the government school system, that is explicitly, designedly removed, the underpinnings uh, of the value systems. 
You cannot have a, an, an egalitarian culture, a multi, you know, this uh, multiculturalism, and have a foundation that, that is what Western civilization has been built on. Now, all that, I say all that just to remind you that there is a tremendous uh, disconnect between the, the, the culture today and where our culture came from. Now, what, one of the things that evidences that is a, 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 an inability of people today to have an appreciation for what's going on in the Bible version issue. People, if you're under 30 years old, you haven't lived in a world where the New American Standard, well, the New American Standard, but the New, New International Version hasn't been the accepted Bible used by most of evangelicalism. And if you say, well, wait a minute, we don't use that Bible, we, you know, I, I don't, and I don't make any bones about it, that uh, we teach the King James Bible, we believe the King James Bible is the Word of God, we do not believe these other Bibles are, uh, are authoritative or valuable. They have mistakes in them, they leave verses out, they add verses in, they don't do things. And so when we say that, people say, eh, nah. you know, nuts on you. You're just, and they look at you like, the, you, know, like you, you just came out of a hole somewhere with fangs. Okay, I understand my appearance, the way it works, but the reason that people have that reaction is because they don't appreciate the history before it. People say, well, you just believe that the King James translators were inspired to produce an inspired translation. Nobody ever heard me say that. The critics say it. I don't say it. I'm in, I, didn't have, I don't train people to believe that. In fact, I train people to believe exactly the opposite of that. You say, yeah, but then how do you have an authoritative Bible? Well, I teach people how to do that, too, because there are verses in Scripture that tell you how to understand those things. That's what the conference is all about, by the way. The problem that, that, that comes up is when you don't understand how you got where you are, okay, you got no idea about how to understand where you're going. Now, to be a King James Bible believer is, and to reject the modern versions is really where the church, where the body of Christ, where the truth has been for most of its history. It's a very new thing to be involved in the new versions. That's why they're called new versions. They really are new. And I, 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 thinking about that, and I want to be sure that I've communicated to you about this, what the real issue behind the issue is. We look at the verses. It's easy to see the differences by just looking at the verses. Sometimes you sit with people and you show them the verses, and they say, eh, so what? And then you say, but wait a minute. If you look at Mark 1, 2, for example, in a new Bible, and it says, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, and it's really written in Malachi, and then someone would say, so what? Well, there's a bigger problem than just a mistake in their Bible. There's someone that didn't understand their Bible shouldn't have a mistake in it to start with. When you take someone in a New International Version, a New American Standard Version, any of the New Bibles, and you take them to Matthew 5, 22, where, where their Bible says, and it quotes Jesus as saying, if, if you look upon a, a, a man with anger, you're in danger of the judgment. And the King James Bible says, if you look upon a man, uh, see now, I can't quote the verse now. What does it say? Yeah, but well, that's not what the verse said to start with. Matthew 5.22. Sort of get bad and stuff in I wasn't thinking about before. But I say to you, whosoever is angry with his brother, that's it, without a cause, is in danger of the judgment. Well, one, ver one, one verse says if you're angry with your brother, then one verse says you're angry with him without a cause. Is that different? Sure it is. Because in Mark chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus looked around on the Pharisees with anger because of the hardness of their heart. Well, if, you, if you're using a, a new version, your version has Jesus Christ condemn himself. Where if you're using the King James, it doesn't, he doesn't condemn himself because it says without a cause, and Mark 3, 5 has a righteous indignation cause. You see that? And you show that to somebody and they say, well, it doesn't really matter. Then you have a bigger problem than, than a Bible problem. 
there's a spiritual problem that exists in the heart of that person where they've been taught not to believe God's Word absolutely. They've been taught to believe religion. They've been taught to believe a doctrinal statement. A church, a preacher, a historic Christian position. That's religion, folks. And not a book. Well, look, if you're going to believe the church... What church are you going to wind up believing? Well, there is a church that claims to be founded by Jesus and have been holding the truth all through the centuries. You know what church that is, don't you? Some of you used to be a part of it. You know what it is, what I'm talking about. And you may not be a part of that church. You just might have a Protestant pope. But you're still having that nonetheless. If there's not a book you can sit on your desk in front of you and say, that book is right... Every time I disagree with it, it's right and I'm wrong. Then you're going to be the authority. And I don't care how you slice it. I don't care who you are. You can be as conservative as George Washington was. Whether he was or not, I'm not real sure. But, I'm, you know, the way you de define conservative today and the way you defined it, you know, 50 years ago, 30 years ago, is so different. But I don't care about all that stuff. That book's got, you've got, you got to have an authority. And it needs to be, a, God gave an authority and he wrote it down and preserved it through history for you and he gave it to you in your own language. And it can be your, it's designed to be your authority.